And yeah, I saw that part. I believe Justice Barrett was the one who sort of expressed that opinion. But I think it was interesting that she made it very clear. I don't know the exact quote, but she said, you know, like you said, the nuances, they didn't really get into it. They wanted to make sure that the justices, that Americans understood that they were ultimately united, even though that they did um, disagree a little bit of like how far Congress, um, the power that they have. So is that very common that justices will have that final message of, you know, we there might be small disagreements, but ultimately big picture, we all agree. Yes, concurring opinions are, are common. That is where a judge or justice will say, I agree with the result, and I would have ruled this way myself, but I would have done it differently or through a different, uh, you know, anal analytical framework. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, we have a 9-0 opinion. We have a 5-4 opinion on whether all of what the court said was necessary. Yeah. Digging in more on what this means in terms of Congress's power. So then the ruling related to what Congress can do, does that mean that they actually have the power to use the 14th Amendment against Trump? Yeah, theoretically, I think it, it, it's possible. Now, of course, remember um, what it takes to get something through the Congress. Um, you know, that would have to get through both the House and the Senate. Um, if you looked at the uh, experience we've had with impeachments, that's obviously a very hard thing to do when it comes to um, changing the, you know, changing who's going to be in the office of president. So, uh, yes, they have that power theoretically. The practical issue is how hard would it be for them to exercise that? What does this mean for Trump? Um, you know, Forbes reporting quoted Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, a left-leaning organization, but they said this ruling was no way a win for Trump, given that the justices didn't rule him not an insurrectionist. So do you agree overall with the assessment of what this means for Trump, that it was a win, or is this actually not that big of a win for him because of that I, insurrectionist piece or another part of it? I, I don't, I, I actually don't agree with that. Mm. And I've heard them say, well, uh, you know, they didn't they didn't say he wasn't an insurrectionist. Well, I, I don't think logically you can assert that something they didn't say means something they meant but didn't say. Um, they avoided the insurrection question because they didn't need to get to it. And the insurrection question is very thorny because it's not defined in the the amendment. And so there would have to be a proceeding or some type of adjudication of those facts, and they were unwilling to rely on what the Colorado court did to find that. In fact, they went out of their way to say, you know, in some states, some of the evidence that the uh, Colorado court relied on might not be admissible because it might be decided, determined to be hearsay. So I don't, uh, I don't subscribe to that. I think they avoided the question because they didn't need to get into it. And they did. And had they gotten into it, it was a quagmire. Mm -hmm. Do you think it says anything at all about the Supreme Court's view of Trump in general, or this ruling completely is just independent of how justices might feel about him? I look. I think um, this is agnostic as to who runs for presidency and wins. Um, I think it's purely about the court's interpretation of. Uh, the text of the Constitution. Now, you can quibble about the legitimacy of that um, analysis, but I don't think the court is um, steered by politics in a, in a partisan sense. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, to have Amy uh, Coney Barry sort of jump the fence, if you will, and side with the liberals, to me, is an indication of how uh, that isn't the case.